Disability History Panel 7, 1851 through 1865 A.D. The commitment to education and the quality of services declined with the increasing demand for institutional placement. Societal values, belief in training and education, state responsibility for persons with disabilities. Responses to disability, establish training schools, build larger institutions, shift from education to custodial care. Involvement by people with disabilities. Students, objects of charity, inmates of institutions. Moral viewpoint. The superintendents of these institutions work toward self-sufficiency, with institutions producing their own food and supplies when they could, thereby lessening their dependence on the state for support. Many institutions had their own power plants, laundries, and farms. Connection to different time in history. As institutions grew in size, superintendents competed with one another to maintain the largest, most self-sufficient facilities. This led to institutions with over 6,000 people by the 1960s at places like Willowbrook State School in New York. Census Results of Persons with Mental Retardation, 1850 through 1890. During the economic troubles of 1857 and as a result of the Civil War, there were few jobs for students from the training schools. Competition for jobs was already high, with immigrants willing to work for low wages. Pupils who returned to their communities looking for work usually ended up in poor houses or jails. At this time, there was a growing demand for services and less money available for training schools. Rapidly, training schools became institutions. Moral Viewpoint Training schools quickly became asylums, providing little more than custodial care for an increasing number of individuals with developmental disabilities. As enrollment increased, the commitment to education was largely abandoned. Pupils became inmates. The goal of educating pupils for life in the community was changed to training inmates to work inside the institution. Higher functioning inmates were taught functional skills and used as laborers to reduce costs. Moral Viewpoint Superintendents believed that persons with different disabilities should be placed in different quarters. Therefore, an institution might have a separate building for persons with epilepsy called an epileptic colony. Another such building for low grade and perhaps a girl's cottage for women with various disabilities. The colony plan allowed institutions to admit a larger number of inmates and relieve society of having to care for such persons in poorhouses. Productive workers at the farm colony were often paroled to work as cheap labor on private farms. As enrollment of persons with more severe disabilities increased, the farm colonies grew to resemble the larger institutions. Am I my brother's keeper? Genesis 4, 9. 